Hi everyone, this is Marianne and welcome to my channel. I just recently earned another fellowship from a national writing workshop in my country. I worked really hard for it. I worked hard to get qualified in the first place. I worked hard on my application and I worked hard for the workshop sessions. And it is a significant achievement for me as a writer in the Philippines. I got the fellowship and I wanted to reward myself with a material thing that is functional and which I can enjoy often. But the challenge is that I cannot spend too much. So I have decided to purchase new discs for my planner. I'm totally loving the disc bound system. It's very versatile and I strongly believe that I am going to stay in the disc bound system for many, many years. So it just makes sense to purchase branded discs. These are the expander metal discs from the Happy Planner brand and I got the rainbow discs. I have been looking at the metal discs of the Happy Planner ever since I started using the disc bound because uh, they have the widest array of sizes and colors. But the heart shaped cutouts were kind of putting me off. But then I thought if I chose the rainbow discs, the heart-shaped cutouts would not be too out of place. The hearts would be out of place with the silver discs and more out of place with the black discs, but hearts on rainbow colored discs will not look too bad. That's what I figured. So I got the rainbow expander metal discs. All discs from the Happy Planner come in a pack of 11 discs regardless of size and color and I only needed eight discs for my planner. I purchased this from Shopee and I will share the link in the description box. I did not pay full price for this. I hardly ever pay full price for anything on Shopee but at the end of the video I will have a final rundown of what I spent on this super low spent planner refresh. To go with the rainbow discs, I purchased two different paper packs, but these are from the same Each brand. pack has 12 different designs. I have a lot of sections on my planner that needed dividers, more than 12 sections, and I did not want to repeat a pattern, so I purchased two different packs. These are the 10 by 10 inch paper packs, which is okay because I use the A5 Slim and the 12 by 12 would be too big for what I need it for and it's more expensive as well. And the 8 by 8 inch paper packs would be too small. In my observation, I think there are also more choices of designs for the 10 by 10 compared with the 12 by 12. I got these two both with colorful, fun designs that are not too, too childlike, and somehow they match. And to make sure that they match in my eyes, I took out the designs that I wanted from the two paper packs and then jumbled them up. And then I went through them one by one and tried to figure out which sheet came from which pack. And then when I couldn't tell, <laughs> that's how I knew for sure that the designs would match each other because the color schemes or the colorways are almost the same and the designs are pretty much the same under the same principle. And by the way, these paper sheets are one-sided. There is nothing printed on the back. Each paper pack also comes with two sheets of die cuts and I used one of the die cuts in my planner which I will show later. And here is the refreshed planner with the rainbow discs and the dividers already made. I love how it's super chunky but it's not difficult to carry around which is one of the many great things that I love about the A5 Slim. I love the rainbow discs. They are shiny and colorful and they look so much fun and it turns out that I do not mind the heart shaped cutouts at all because I hardly ever see them from the angle that I use the planner. And some colors of the discs repeat. There is a dark pink, sort of like a magenta and then a lighter pink. It looks like a peachy pink to me. Then there is a yellow and then a green which is sort of like a teal and then a light blue and a light lavender and then back to magenta and the light pink. Eight discs in total in use in my planner. The other three discs that I didn't use are the yellow and the teal and the light blue and I put those in my stash of discs. Now let us flip through the sections so I can show off my new dividers. 
The setup of this is still the same as the setup that I have showed previously. I will link that video in the description box. I just added a few more sections and made a couple of changes in my calendar section and I will show you that. For the front cover, I chose this pattern. I like that the colors of the discs are similar to the stripes on here in like a sunburst design. There are also two pinks, a yellow, although there is only one green. And I did not want the backs of the covers and dividers to be plain white, so on the cover I pasted this polka dot design to match the very first divider that it's right next to. I was going for the end paper look like in actual physical books. I also laminated the cover using a self laminating sheet from Daiso but I did not retain any uh, uh, you know that the edge of the laminating sheet that keep. I didn't keep that because I didn't feel that I needed it because I already had the external cover that's frosted semi transparent white. The first section is the me section and has a few of my identification cards, my vaccination cards, and medical cards. I also made the dividers double-sided because when I am on the section, I did not want to look at something that's plain white. The discs are colorful, the covers are colorful, the front of the dividers are colorful, so I might as well make everything else colorful that I can. The next section is labeled to file, organize, and it's really just stuff to put away somewhere. Um, after I process them, I just stick them on here for later processing. Right now I have an old prescription that's been fully filled and a sticky note that has to be archived. And I just stash them in this clear plastic sleeve that I cut down to size and punched holes in. This is the same plastic I used to make the holders for the cards, which I showed in a previous video. I will link that down below in case you want to see exactly how I made those. Then I have this sheet of graph paper in case I need to note something down and file it away somewhere. The next section is called to deal with. It's basically an inbox. One of the things on here is my running to-do list that I check once a week. And by the way, the tabs are sandwiched in between the sheets of patterned paper so that the small white strip of paper will, will not go over the pattern and will not disrupt the design on the actual dividers. The next section is called reference. It has information that I need to have handy with me at all times, which includes my son's schedule for class. It's all online because of the pandemic he never leaves the house but it would be nice for me to know when i cannot disturb him next we have a section for blank note papers and i have them here in various sizes as you can see now when i want to cover up something on my daily pages that i cannot erase i just cut up a small piece from this sheet right here and i paste it over the mistake it's a technique that I have used for many years and I think I even have a video about it on my channel. I will link it down below when I find it. The next section is brain dump. I love the artwork here. This is so appropriate for brain dump. Now I know I said I didn't like the word brain dump, but let's just call it what it is. I think it's still the most appropriate word for what we use this section for. Next is a section for notebook orders, then a section for tracking online purchases, just to make sure I receive everything that I ordered. Next is the section for submissions. These are for academic submissions to journals and similar publications. Just some ideas for academic papers and where I can submit them. And then here's a section for my YouTube channel and podcasts. These are ideas for content and also some task lists for some videos that I'm working on. Then I have a section for university. I am done with the proposal defense and I now will be starting work on the actual thesis starting next week. And uh, now I thought I would be required to take a penalty course this coming semester because I have stayed longer than the maximum residency requirement but as it turns out, the dean decided to suspend that rule because of the pandemic. People really had to take a pause from their studies, just like what happened to me in 2020. So I am not required to take a penalty course, but I kept the academic calendar on here anyway, just so I would know when people would be busy. I have to time my submissions and concerns before they start getting busy so that they can get to my concern and get it out of the way 
early. So this academic calendar will still be useful to me. Next is my section called Fly Away. This is for my long-term goal. And I have put in here my words for the year 2021, which are focus and achieve. And I even put in this gold foiled washi tape that I really like. I have a video about my words of the year for 2021 and I will link it in this description box. And then next is a section for my annual goals and then a section for my novel in progress, which has been the subject for the workshop during that national writers workshop that i mentioned in the beginning of the video which i got a fellowship for and by the way those sessions are available to the public and i will share the links in the description box the next section is called money projects and these are just stuff that i do uh, specifically for money small editorial jobs some design jobs also people that i have to pay things like that I also have a section for my reading life because one of the habits I am trying to form is that I must read for at least an hour a day for pleasure. Not because I need it for my research, not because it's required for any class or for any job, but for pleasure. For now, this section just has a list of books that I'm considering reading. Next, I have a section for creative projects, mostly for writing that doesn't necessarily pay but I want to do them anyway for the purpose of you know adding to my creative portfolio and now here is a divider that says party 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 with exclamation points and it is a section for trackers and I am just trying to be funny in an ironic way because what I track here is my hormone levels <laughs> i am going through perimenopause and i want to track my periods and my hot flashes and frequent urination and the other symptoms of perimenopause that fluctuate on a daily basis and some symptoms that don't happen every day but i have to note when they happen anyway it's no party but the divider says it's party 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 i just want to make myself laugh a little bit <laughs> Next is this section for all of the sticky notes and some pieces of paper that I sometimes turn into sticky notes by using this two-way glue from Zig. I haven't made a video about this glue yet, but I will. Here are some scraps of paper that I can cut up and use as sticky notes when needed. And here are the side reminder tabs. I redid the envelopes. There used to be three. Now there are four smaller ones, but these are the exact same tabs. And the envelopes are also narrower. I stuck them on some scraps of cardstock, as you can see. That way, the holes don't get so ratty because they used to be made of paper. Now they're made of cardstock. And finally, here is the last section that has my calendar. The divider has no tab, but it's cut wider. I also put a die cut on here. I took it from one of the paper packs. And I put a sheet of self-lamination only on the front. The first thing on here is that sheet of fold-out cardstock that right now has my habits tracker. I have attempted to start new habits and I am not doing well, but I plan to persevere. And remember this, this is my monthly pages that you have seen before, but I have added this strip right here so that it would work as a sort of divider, but the tab would be the entire height of the paper. Because of this strip, which hangs out of the edge, I would always know what month I am on and also so that it would be easy for me to flip to the incoming month, which is September in this case, even when I am still on the daily pages for August. And I have already gone ahead and put those strips on all of the months. So this is one of the major changes that I made in my calendar section. The months used to be on a different section than the daily pages, but now I have combined the months and the days. And like I showed you before, these monthly pages are not back to back because I want to be able to archive the pages per month. And the blank pages add to flipping, but because of these strips that I have added, I can flip straight to the months without having to see those blank pages. And it just works. And then we have the back cover, which is the same as the front cover.
I super love the chunkiness. This has everything that I would ever need in a planner. I have always loved chunky planners. I was on the personal sized ring bound system for several years and I used a planner binder that had 1.5 inch rings and on some days it did not feel like that was enough. I have some videos of that planner binder in my channel and I will link it down below. Now now I have discs that are 1.75 inches in diameter. Granted, the dividers add a lot of bulk because they're all double layered, but that's okay. It's chunky, but the planner itself is narrow, so it doesn't feel too big and it's still very easy to carry around. One thing that I have observed that I do with my planner is that I scooch it around my desk a lot and I did not want to scratch that plastic cover. This cover is not expensive at all. I bought it you know, several weeks ago as part of my stash and I never used it before but I'm using it now and I didn't want to destroy the cover nevertheless. So I took another one of those old PVC sheets that I have and just put them on the discs. I also wanted to do the same for the front, but I also added this pen holder. This is made of metal and the loop stretches. I bought this during the summer, very cheap. I will link it in the description box. It slides onto your cover, but because this PVC sheet is so thin and it's, it's glossy, this pen holder slides around so I just secured it with some clear tape and that's what I use to carry my pencil. Now I can scooch and slide my planner around on my desk without worrying that the frosted plastic covers will get scratched. It's not the prettiest solution but it does the job. One last but very important thing that I added to this entire configuration is a travel cover. I put it on when I have to toss my planner inside my bag when I have to go out of the house which is not every day, but I have so many tabs on the side that I didn't want them to get squished in my bag. So we are going to make a travel cover. I figured out the measurements and wrote them down on a piece of scrap paper. I will explain the dimensions later. I'm going to use the cover of this clear book that I bought for 69 pesos. I like that the cover is also a semi-transparent white, but it also has a texture to it. This looks to be the same clear book that I used for the covers of my commonplace notebook. I have a video about that and I will link it in the description box. That was an old clear book that I had lying around. But when I decided to make a travel cover and I was looking for material to use, I saw that same clear book or what looks to be the same clear book and it was still available in the store so that's what I got. First, I cut the holes away from the rest of the panel because they were throwing me off. And then I cut down the plastic to the actual height that I want it to be. I wanted to round the corners so they won't poke me and I used this corner rounder under the HBW brand. This is kind of old and it, it's gotten a bit difficult to use. It's so hard to bear down on it, so I brought it to the floor and stepped on it and that worked. Now this travel cover will have two scores so that I can fold them over twice like a spine that will protect the fore edge of my planner. I marked my score lines with a pencil and then made sure to run the blade of the box cutter over the plastic very lightly but several times. I did that twice because I needed to fold the plastic in two places like I said and as you can see here. And then I went ahead and trimmed it down to the final size. And then I used this corner rounder again to round off the last corner and I did that on the floor once again. And now we're ready to punch the holes. I do have that single mushroom hole puncher but somehow I wrecked it. It no longer works and I am annoyed because this is just around two months old and I don't even use it often. I was punching a sheet of plastic and it got stuck and while I was trying to get it unstuck, something fell out that I could not put back and now the hole punch no longer works. 
But I do have this single hole punch that still works. This is very old. It doesn't even have the back cover on it anymore. And it has the exact same size as the convex of the mushroom cap. I'm not sure if you can see that on camera, but the curve of the top of the mushroom aligns perfectly with the circle of the hole punch. And to find the center, I just folded this guide in half, marked the center with a pencil line, and also looked for the center of the plastic sheet and marked that one with a pencil. And then I aligned the two pencil lines and secured them together in place with binder clips. Then I went ahead and punched out the holes and then cut the slits using that paper guide that I have. And finally, the travel cover is finished. As for the closure, I'm putting on the silicone band. I think it's made for notebooks. This is not new. It's actually kind of dusty, but I can wash it later. And then after I put the travel cover on the back of the planner like so, I just bring it around to the front like this and then slip the flap in between the cover and that PVC sheet. And now the entire planner is closed and secure. The way I measured this travel cover is that that panel that covers the four edge of the planner where all of the tabs are, that's exactly 1.75 inches wide because that's the size of the discs and it works perfectly. I like it when the things that I measure end up aligning really well. And it looks like I can still bulk up this planner just a little bit more, but I don't have to. I don't have to right now, but if I have to in the future, I know I can. Now I did a travel cover before in a previous video, which I will link down below. It's this one, which I used for a while and it worked so well and I still like it. But that time I was on the 1.25 inch disc. So this panel, and the, the, this one that is one inch wide, it worked. But I'm on much bigger discs now. This is no longer the right size for my planner, but I do like that I was able to use the closure on the envelope. I found an old one in my stash, this white one, which has a different closure, but is a closure nonetheless. This is also just one inch thick. I think all of these envelopes are just one inch thick. These will be fine if you have one inch discs and want the closure that comes with the envelope. But if you have bigger discs, this would be too small. The solution that I have for my super thick planner is something you can try out. The tabs are protected, it has a closure, it has a pen holder, and it just works basing on my experience. And that is my super low spend planner refresh as my own little reward for myself after getting a new writing fellowship. How much did I spend in total? The only things that I purchased were the expander discs and the paper packs and the clear book. The expander discs were listed at 995 Philippine pesos, but I paid only 795 for it because I got free shipping and I used Shopee coins, which are a result of previous cashbacks. The paper packs were 160 each, but I only paid 240 for both packs because I got new cash back and I also got free shipping. If we include the cost of the clear book, which is 69, the total cost to me of all of the things that I purchased for this planner refresh is 1,104 Philippine pesos, which converts to about 22 or 23 US dollars. It's actually not bad, considering that I totally changed the look of my planner and made it carry more content that I need, made it perform more things for me, and I have new metal discs that I can use and reuse over and over for a long, long time. I am happy. And that is my little video for you today. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found something helpful that you can use. Do you use a travel cover for your disc bound planners and notebooks? Please let me know in the comments and we will talk there. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.